this is the guy who really started it. This is Cornbread. Um, even though New York really was the prominent place for graffiti, Cornbread was out of Philadelphia. His name was Daryl McCray. He started in the mid-60s. His nickname was Cornbread because he would beg for cornbread at his high school from the uh, cafeteria people. And he'd always demand cornbread and he never had it, so he got that nickname. But really, he started tagging because he was trying to get a girl's attention. And he thought if he got his name as many places as he could, she might go out. So, I mean, that's the auspicious beginning of graffiti as we know it. Um, there's two pretty great urban legends about him. One is that he snuck onto uh, uh, an airplane uh, field and tagged uh, Jackson 5's airplane. They had their own airplane with their logo on it, and he wrote cornbread on it. The other is that he snuck into the uh, Philadelphia Zoo, and he tagged an elephant. <laughs> this is decades before Banksy painted an elephant for one of his shows. And uh, those stories are probably true. I hope that they are, because they're good stories. And uh, next slide, please. This is one of the New originators. This is Taki 183. Now, when you look at the pieces later on and you look at work by someone like Buff or the other artists we're going to show, you know, consider Cornbread and Taki and how very simple the tags were. And um, you know, they're they're writing their name. And that was that was graffiti. They called themselves writers um, because they were just simply writing. And um, I'm saying the word tag very often, we should probably define that for those who don't know. Is there anyone who would like to explain what the definition of a tag is on the panel here? Anybody want to go for it? A, it's a signifier or an identifier. Uh, I would think in a graffiti context it would be a word. Uh, in a street art context it could actually be a visual element. So you have people that are um, developing tags and what happened in New York, especially in the Bronx, is that there was um, a culmination. And some of the reasons why it started happening really in the 70s is that the schools cut most of their funding to the arts. So you had a lot of kids who um, really had, all of a sudden, a lot less outlets for self-expression. Um, also, aerosol cans kind of became available. So really, it was a, it was a perfect storm where people had the opportunity to kind of do this new thing. Um, Taki was a, a high school kid who um, was doing something he called All City, and that became a big deal, is that if you got your name up all over the city, you were kind of the king of the city. Mm -hmm. You had your name out there. Um, and that was something that a lot of people, even today, they want to get up everywhere, um, from scene all the way through uh, people working right now. That's, that's the idea. <laughs> Go for it, yeah. Go for it, cut. I think well, one of the things, we, one of the reasons New York became a real center of, of graffiti and street art, I think, was also because it was such a vibrant art community here already. So it wasn't just, you know, the kids in the Bronx or whatever. It's like downtown artists were noticing it and responding to it. And that was definitely part of the dynamic that contributed to that environment. So it's really because New York was important that way. But also in the 70s, there was a real big movement to start to give power back to people who felt like they had no power. And so there was everything from like, you know, Puerto Rican pride, and then there was, you know, the rise of like black identity in America and those types of things. And there were different groups that felt like they could take, you know, this wall and make it their own. And they could really sort of give their voice, their marginalized voices at the time, um, some expression. I think that was really an important part of why it developed in New York and not in other cities. Next slide. This is the artist's scene. Um, this is a classic, you know, bubble letter piece. Now this is more recent, but this is kind of what he's done more or less since the 70s. Scene was a star, one of the stars of the important film that came out uh, from PBS uh, in 1983 called Style Wars. He and Donnie White were kind of two of the big names that they focused on. Um, yeah, so on the uh, right hand corner, you can see his tag, and then this is you know a piece that he did, and um, he now works in works and lives in Paris, and he makes this work. And he's been one of the few who've really crossed over and made a career and uh, survived in the gallery world, and he's still well respected and one of the greats. Next slide. 
This is two important artists, uh, unfortunately, Stay High 149, who did this piece that's kind of reminiscent of The Saint, the TV show. Um, he passed away recently. Um, he was one of the originators. And the other piece is by Tracy 168. Mm -hmm. And this is more of his classic graffiti. You know, these were guys who, they were just out doing it because they thought it was fun and they were passionate about it and it was a great outlet for them. The concept of putting the work up in a gallery and making a living, and, uh, it, it just wasn't there yet. It wasn't something that they were really considering. This was just something they did. And 